You too. So every single year, the iPhone release, you hear the exact same comment. It's the same phone. You're buying the same phone. But obviously from an external physical standpoint, I mean, <laughs> come on now, not much really seems to have changed. But in all reality, when we look at these devices and you really measure up the differences and the refinements, a lot of it is under the hood when it comes to Apple. And apparently Samsung as well with the S23 Ultra from the S22 Ultra. But refinements are okay. But we need to get to the bottom of this statement and see if it's actually true. Another reality is not everyone upgrades year over year. And even if they do, a lot of them are in an upgrade program which means they're able to trade in the device, they're on monthly payments, no one's paying full retail price. Now, there are a few out there who pay in full every single year, and obviously a person like that has the budget to upgrade every year, so carry on and enjoy. All right, so we have the 14 Pro Max versus the 15 Pro Max, natural titanium, and I have the gold stainless steel 14 Pro Max. Now, from a perspective of design and hardware, there's actually a little difference this year. Okay, so real design differences and cues between the 14 Pro Max and 15 Pro Max. Right off the bat, the most obvious, stainless steel, fingerprint magnet, but less showing to scratches. Titanium, not a fingerprint magnet, at least not the natural titanium, and more prone to showing scratches, especially the color variants, but not so much with the natural titanium. That's why I think it's the best color out of the options. And then on the rear, we talk about camera hardware, which is basically the same except for the Tetra Prism 5X zoom lens, which to me separates the two from a photography standpoint. If you make use of the 5X lens, which I adore and love, especially if you put an ND filter on it, it's just outright phenomenal. That mosquito is the biggest mosquito I've ever seen in my life. Hold on. I had to stop on the player. Now another change is in the port area which you got USB 2.0 speeds with lightning versus USB 3.0 speeds with USB-C. I'm excited about the USB-C because it opens up a lot of functionality and access to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. But other than that, same OLED panel, very visible in direct sunlight with the 2000 nits, very much similar yet different. This action button. And boy, oh boy, is it an improvement that I appreciate a lot. Now, Android users, stand down. Samsung, nice, relax, sit on the sideline, let the, Apple people enjoy their action button. One function only. This now has unlimited functions in theory. So from a design perspective, just looking at them at a glance from a distance, you don't see much. But if we zoom in a little closer to the details, well, then you notice the changes, right? Some. <laughs> but if we want to get a little bit more technical in the differences from a physical standpoint, the 14 Pro Max weighs in at a hefty 240 grams versus the reduced 221 grams of the 15 Pro Max. Slight difference, and when it comes to a physical difference, there is a very minimal millimeter difference in size, and a lot of that is due to the reduced bezels. Now, it's gonna be hard to tell Side by side, I'd assume. I'm gonna have to whip out the uh, telephoto lens. Not by much, not by a ton, but it's something. You know, it's in the details. And I'll use my macro lens to give you guys a closer up look at the actual bezel differences. But since we're here, let's talk about the display, the OLED panel. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, from a technical standpoint, if you look at the tech specs, it's exactly the same OLED panel. So in conclusion, the 14 Pro Max is color accurate, extremely bright, beautiful OLED panel is the 15 Pro Max's color accurate, beautifully bright OLED panel. In the discussion, exact same ceramic shield glass, always on display. Now, when we get into the details in the internal hardware under platform, things shift a little bit. Same OS, but different chip hardware. We have the A16 Bionic chip versus the A17 Pro Bionic chip which is boasting more GPU power and cores. Well, one extra core in GPU. And it's the three nanometer technology versus four nanometer. Let's be honest and let's be real. Your user experience from a software perspective, outside of the hardware differences like the action button, which we're gonna talk about, it's generally the same. Now, one other difference from a purchase perspective in between these two is you can only get 
the 15 Pro Max starting at 256 gigabytes. So the 128 gigabyte you used to get with the 14 Pro Max is no longer a thing. And a big reason is because Apple's packing the ProRes log, ProRes video recording. Honestly, 128 gigs would not last at all, especially if you take advantage of those ProRes video and pro camera features, camera raw, and all of those things. But if you don't, then hey, 128 would have been a nice option for those people who can live with that. All right, next up is camera hardware. Not much is different from the front facing camera being exactly the same to the ultra wide to the wide, but not so much in the telephoto. That's the one separating factor, but we'll go outside really quick. At least I did go outside and we will test every single lens against each other in auto mode, pro video camera settings mode, and even log mode. And we'll get to the bottom as to whether this is a true camera upgrade or not. But it's year over year. No one really upgrades year over year. Continue the video, CJ, let's go. All right, so this shootout should be quite interesting. Right now I'm using the auto typical camera app, front facing camera. We got the 15 Pro Max on my left with the 14 Pro Max in my right hand. And the bright sun just decided to show itself, so. <laughs> oh, and you can shoot ProRes log on a front facing, wide, telephoto, whatever with the 15 Pro Max. And you just gotta use regular on the 14 Pro Max. So is there a difference? Log and uh, no log. All right, so this is the wide angle lens, 15 Pro Max, 15, no, 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 14 Pro. Max. <laughs> All right, let me do log versus the regular mode and then we'll get into the pro camera setting. So right now I have ProRes log on the iPhone 15 Pro Max and then we have this ProRes HDR on the 14 Pro Max. So which one is looking its best? These are some of the best options you can choose. Take up a lot of memory, so I gotta put it into this. And here's the ultra wide camera. We got the iPhone 15 Pro Max and then the 14 Pro Max. This is the regular camera mode. Back with another telephoto test. This is the 14 Pro Max 3X telephoto zoom, which I don't think is any different than the 15 Pros. And I did it with the 15 Pro, but we got to do it with the 14 Pro Max since this is the 14 Pro Max versus the 15 Pro Max. And right now you have the sun coming from behind a cloud. So we got a, a varying situation going from, you know, soft light to harsh light. So is this top quality? Does it compare to the 15 Pro Max's 5X telephoto shot that I did a while ago? Let me know down in the comment section below. Is it worth the upgrade? Okay, so you guys just saw the results out of these cameras. Is it enough for you to want to upgrade if you're in between, if you're considering the 15 Pro Max because of the new physical changes? You know, USB-C, action button, titanium body build, the latest and greatest, if we're being honest. A lot of people want to upgrade just for that. But was it worth it from a camera perspective? Hit the comment section down below and let me know. All right, really quick, let's discuss the ports just really fast. Lightning port, which is USB 2.0 speeds versus USB-C with USB 3 speeds. Especially for those of you who take advantage of recording, you know, the ProRes or the higher, you know, file sizes. Or if you offload a lot of video and photos off of your device via the cable, if you've done it with the USB 2.0 Lightning cable, you know it's good pretty slow for today's day and age. But with this bad boy, I can use a USB 3.0 compatible cable or Thunderbolt cable and I get lightning fast export speeds. So that's clutch from a port perspective. Now, we didn't really take advantage of super fast charging from the cable port, but you do have okay wire charging with the 15 Pro Max USB-C. And fun fact, in the battery department, the 15 Pro Max actually saw a slight bump at 4,441 milliamp hours versus the 4,323 milliamp hours on the 14 Pro Max. Physical change, but what about real world change? Well, honestly, it's too 
early in the 15 Pro Max's lifespan to give a true verdict. But what I will say from what I've seen thus far and my everyday usage is quite comparable the same. But with that physical difference and with future iOS 17 updates and optimization, the 15 Pro Max has all of the potential to be the better battery. We just have to wait and see. So, uh, you know, they don't look too much different. They won't act or perform too much different. I mean, there's a performance bump in the A17 Pro for sure. We can't just look over that, but we just got some extra GPU and now we got native, like, you know, real full on studio gaming coming to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. That's giving it a slight edge. Now, when you pack a lot of power into a chip, you packing a lot of heat. And I already made a video addressing the controversies or the claims around the 15 Pro Max and it's overheating. And we've been seeing more tests come out to date and so forth. And honestly, I don't think it's anything to get worried about. Um, if you're a little hesitant and you wanna wait a little bit, then wait, press pause and keep it locked on the news. But in other words, do not watch the fake news that's been going around. But a lot of power, a lot more heat, a different body, different chassis, you know, this first iteration of these materials, there might be some slight growing pains, but I think a lot of things that's going on or that's being claimed with the 15 Pro Max, I'm not saying any of it, that's why I say claims, it can probably all be corrected with future iOS 17 updates. I don't think it's physical as much as it is uh, software and optimization. So what is really different coming from the 14 Pro Max to the 15 Pro Max? You got iOS 17, which I can run on my 14 Pro Max and have an experience very much similar to that of the 15 Pro Max, but there are separators. The action button, whether you want to give it its flowers or not, the same way people were hating on uh, the dynamic island in the beginning, but yet it proved itself useful. I feel like the same thing is going to happen with that action button. I use it every single day. And the fact that I can just press and hold it, I get this quick shortcut menu to a lot of things that I do with my smart home and with my everyday usage as far as camera and so forth, and being able to get to those quickly. You know what I mean? Turn off lights in the studio, turn on my speakers. And if you haven't seen it, let me show you really quick. Because, uh, let me see, studio light off. <laughs> Press it again. Studio light on. <laughs> You're welcome. And you can use this with smart locks, smart doors, smart home this, smart home that. Um, you know, I don't know, whatever else you got that's smart in your home that works <laughs> in Apple smart home, you can control and have activations at the press of the action button, which improves the iOS user experience beyond what you get on the 14 Pro Max. Now, if you don't see yourself using that, then it doesn't. Um, another separator that's for me personally that I appreciate is in that Tetraprism 5X zoom lens. I'm telling you guys, I've seen some amazing photos. There are some people who are personal to me, that's why I won't post them, but my goodness, I'm about to take some more of me so y'all can just stare at my mug and I'll get you some more shots. But that 5X lens is phenomenal, especially if you have tools like ND filters, so that way you can bring the true quality out of that lens. Everyone's using the auto camera with no other additional hardware, but some people are out there who are hip are using ND filters and you really seeing what this camera can do. I'm gonna show you guys some results, trust me, I got you. But it is an improvement for those of you who can take advantage of it. Again, I gotta always like lay everything flat and fair. It's not something to get hyped about if you're not gonna use it. Now to some, the weight reduction, of uh, you know, the new titanium slash aluminum build is gonna be something that appeals to some people and to others, maybe not. Maybe the 19 gram reduction, it's not enough for you. I mean, ah, it's tit for tat, I feel it and I appreciate it, but it like depends on how you build out your device. You throw a case on there, you throw a wallet, at least it's 19 grams lighter. If you don't do any of that stuff and use it without a case, mm, the weight difference is apparent. The weight distribution is there, but is it necessary? It's for you to decide. And then there comes the reality to user experience and the truth as to are you buying the same device by getting an iPhone 15 Pro Max? I'll answer that quickly. No, you're not buying the same phone. Yes, you're buying a similar device, but it's definitely 
not the same phone. The same way the S23 Ultra from the S22 Ultra like separated itself, whether or not it's worthy of the upgrade is totally subjective to you, the consumer who's gonna actually spend your money on said item. But the battery upgrades because of the new chip and internal optimization, the efficiency, those refinements were worth it to some and many, honestly. And the same is gonna go with the 14 Pro Max to the 15 Pro Max to some and to many, it will be worth it. But I'm not telling you to do it, especially if it's not within your budget, it's not in your cards. A lot of people are upgrading, I'm saying from iPhone 11, iPhone 10 to 10s Max. Everyone's coming from those year cycles, the iPhone 12. I see a lot of those, I've seen some 13 people, and I've seen some 14 Pro Max users going into the 15 Pro Max, 14 Pro users going into the 15 Pro and so on. But the user experience between these two is the Apple user experience. It's the iOS 17 experience, which I've been enjoying. I had iOS 17 on my 14 Pro Max before even getting into the 15 Pro Max. So I was very familiar. The separators though were in the action button. The uh, later chip with the higher performance, you know, snappy and smoothness, but at the end of the day, every iPhone is smooth. So it's tit for tat in that respective but are you buying the same phone is the question. And the easy answer is absolutely not. You're just buying something similar, but it's not the same. <laughs> oh man, hey, listen, man. There's a lot of cap out there around the 15 Pro Max. I'm just telling you guys, listen, I'm a content creator. A lot of us are looking for viewership. And when you're controversial or you speak of topics that are in the area of controversy, you get a lot of views. So. Listen, a lot of people are getting views for controversies or exaggerations. That's what I like to say. Oh, it's, oh, it's a little hot. Oh, you seeing this hot? Oh, we got battery gate. Oh my goodness, heat gate, whatever. Da, 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 da. Oh, we bent it. Oh, it snapped. The glass on the back snaps easier because the structure is different. They made it easier to repair. But in doing that, they gave up the back plate being connected to the glass, which is what's on this design in favor for the glass being separated from the back plate which is what's on this design, which creates just a different structural integrity. Most of you guys put a case on your device. Most of you guys have screen protectors. Most of you guys protect your investment. Continue to protect it. All right, I'm out for real this time. Ooh. You technology snobs, technology snobs. I didn't just about had it with all of y'all. Listen, huh. duck. No diamonds, no watch, good timing, yeah. New watch, no diamonds, no watch, good timing, yeah. Need no middleman, I'm the man of man, send it in. I like what I like, me, I know my rights, it's sipping in. I like having fun, I do what I want, it's what it is. For my son and son, for my daughters, yeah, it's for my twin. I work through the night.